Hello, everybody. Welcome to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and I am here to learn some facts with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends, all while relaxing and sometimes going a little bit off topic. And to me, that going off topic part is uh, is all part of the experience. I think that that's really how we learn is to be able to connect things to to, to other things and to put stuff into perspective, maybe compare it to stuff that we've already learned. And that's uh, that to me is an amazing way to learn. But anyways, uh, before we get too sidetracked, I just want to um, you know thank uh, every single one of you for listening to the podcast. We got a lot of you guys uh, in the United States, a lot of you uh, in Canada. Um, you know, all around the world, even Ireland, a lot of you guys. And uh, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, guys, thank you so much for the support. We get so many new listeners every day, and I'm so happy that I'm able to uh, go on these little journeys with you guys into into uh, different animals and, and uh, you know, uh, you guys out there that share my passion for these kinds of things and also to, uh, to help you guys relax. You know, it's an absolute gift. So thank you all so very much. Um, if you guys want to follow the uh, Instagram and the Twitter, those are both RWAF podcast. Uh, so you can follow that if you'd like, uh, and you can t- uh, chime in as to what you want to hear next on the podcast. Uh, we're going to be doing some giveaways on there at some point. Um, and let's talk about how you can listen to the show. So for any of you guys that are new out there, it seems as though a lot of you, uh, a lot of you listeners, really enjoy, um, you know. Uh, turning on the podcast close to the end of the day some of you like doing it in the middle maybe you know maybe you're at work and and uh, and you just you like something to listen to something to have your focus um, or you are at home and want to just wind down you find a nice couch somewhere you find a nice chair uh, or this is just the end of the day you know and you're uh, and you're you're ready to go to sleep and you want something to fall asleep to every every form of listening to this podcast is um, is absolutely encouraged uh, and and I uh, I'm here with you for about uh, you know around 30 minutes we'll say around 30 minutes I think is is the average uh, length of the podcast so I'm with you for those 30 minutes and if you want to listen to more uh, absolutely you can we have as of now I think uh, 15 episodes to listen to so uh, you have plenty of content to go through uh, so if you want to uh, listen to all of those maybe offline you could always download the podcast uh, and uh, and whatnot and follow it on Spotify. So, uh, let's talk about the sources before we get into our, our animal, which in this case is the, the sea turtle. So, the sea turtle, a very, a very popular one, uh, I, believe. I believe. I think a lot of people really respect the sea turtle, and uh, I mean, uh, that's going off of kind of the, the, the massive movement that was around sea turtles not too long ago, and even now. Um, so, I got my sources from National Geographic, uh, worldwildlife.org and, uh, and uh, live science or life science. So I've used all of these sources before. Um, in the case of the sea turtle, I, I really went to uh, you know, a lot of different sources, uh, but the ones that I actually used were from these websites. I, I, uh, I still looked through maybe like six to seven sources. I took the most, uh, you know, the stuff with the, with the most uh, kind of uh, interest to me, and I, and I put it in there uh, as well as some kind of unique facts about them. So starting off the show with uh, with how many species there are of sea turtles. There are seven in total uh, that inhabit the Earth's uh, oceans. So we have the loggerhead, we have the leatherback, the green turtle, the hawksbill, the Kemp's ridley, olive ridley, and flatback. And we'll get into some of the specifics of, of some of these. I'm not going to go into all of them, but some of them that are that are the most interesting or the most noteworthy, rather. Um, and all species except for the flatback occur in North American waters. So, you know, they use the word occur, but, you know, that, that's where, that's where they, they live. Uh, and, but the flatback lives in waters around Australia. So I know I have some Australian listeners out there. So that's where you got the flatback sea turtle up there. So you guys are lucky. Uh, we, we, got, we got the other six, but you guys got one of, uh, you got one, one of them, and that's the flatback. Uh, and let's talk about the leatherback turtle for a second. So this turtle is uh, known as the largest sea turtle in the world, uh, and this and and this sea turtle can weigh up to two thousand pounds. So let's think about that for a second. So on this show, we've already we've covered some massive animals, uh, including the elephant, right? And the elephant weighed up to 
uh, the African elephant was close to 12,000 to 13,000 pounds. Let's say 12,000. Let's get that. Let's get that as the average. So if you take 12,000 pounds, uh, you know, divided by 2,000, you're talking about a uh, a, a, tur- a a sea turtle that is around one sixth of the weight of an of an elephant. Uh, that is gigantic, right? I mean, if if you think about it. A turtle, right? When we think about turtles, we don't generally think about a 2,000 pound, or at least the majority of us don't, maybe some marine biologists out there do, but uh, the leatherback can weigh up to 2,000 pounds, um, and it is the only sea turtle that does not have a hard and bony shell. This this really uh, caught me off guard. I was, I, I, I was you know, it, it was hard to believe. Uh, its carapace, as they call it, so that's what they call it, is somewhat flexible and almost even rubbery to the touch. Um, you know, if, you, if you're curious about what this looks like, if, as long as you're not going to, going to sleep now, you could always, uh, you know, search, search uh, this uh, leatherback turtle up. Uh, I think these guys would look really interesting uh, because the shells of other turtles are made of thick plates that are called either scutes or scutes. It depends how you want to pronounce that. That's S-C-U-T-E-S. Um, so leatherback, incredibly large, the largest of the bunch, and... It is the only sea turtle that does not have an extremely hard and bony exterior, uh, meaning the shell. Um, and the leatherback grows up to seven feet long. So seven feet long, that is gigantic. Uh, the largest one that was ever recorded was eight foot five in length and weighed uh, 2,020 pounds, so around 916 uh, kilograms. So on average, they're growing up to be around seven feet long. But the largest one that was ever recorded, we're talking eight foot five. When you try to put these things into perspective, it's it's incredibly difficult, right? Because I think the average height of somebody is at this point um, over time, human beings have been grow have been um, uh, growing, um, you know, uh, to be larger or taller rather. Um, so in the past, you guys may have known. This is going to be a quick side note about about humans. I always love to relate what we're talking about to humans or other animals. And don't forget, guys, humans are animals too. We're not a, we're not an exemption to that rule. A lot of people don't like to uh, admit that you know uh, humans have this sense of animosity, but we we're animals, guys. You know, and that's why I love learning about animals because we can always learn something. So let's relate this to humans really quickly. So humans in the past uh, 200 years, I think it's around the 19th century. Um, before where, they, where we would have to kind of struggle sometimes with uh, periodic malnourishment. Uh, and this kind of malnourishment really affects the, the development of, of human beings in terms of their height. I don't know if there's anything else. I'm sure that there's other things among that. But um, the, 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 the primary thing I'm talking about here is just, is just height. So malnourishment and things like vaccination, um, we don't have to worry so much about fighting infection all the time. Uh, you know, uh, not all the time, but uh, but not as much because we have much better uh, uh, ways of taking care of ourselves now. So human beings have been growing to be much, much taller, um, you know, over the past 200, 200 or so years. I just think I just thought that was a that, that was something interesting. Um, but anyways, let, let's go back to turtles. So uh, we were talking about how the largest one ever recorded was eight foot five in length. I keep forgetting what the tallest human being is I think it was seven foot six. I don't know if they breached eight feet, but I could be wrong. Uh, I guess I'll search that after the po- uh, after the podcast. Um, and let's talk about if we swung all the way in that one direction. Let's swing back to the smallest sea turtle of the bunch, which is the Kemp's Ridley turtle, and it grows to be about two feet in in length. So if we look at two feet to seven feet, we're talking a five foot difference, which is which is huge. Um, but two feet long for a, for a turtle still, we're, we're, you know, this is not, uh, it's all relative, guys. When I say something is small, I'm almost always talking relatively to something else. Because, uh, for example, ants, right? Ants are very small, though they're insects, but uh, the, the sheer strength that they have, if they were to be the size of, say, in this case, a turtle about two feet long, they would be absolutely, you know, unstoppable. Uh, so in terms of size and stuff like that, it's all relative, right? You know, you, you can never discount uh, discount an animal for, for size or for any other kind of characteristics because, you know, it, it can be really surprising. And that's, what, that, that's uh, something about nature that I love very much. 
Um, let's talk about their migrations. So they're, they're kind of notorious for their migrations because they make huge uh, or, or rather incredibly long migrations between feeding and breeding areas. So that leatherback turtle, which was the largest one, also travels an average of around uh, 3,700 miles each way, so 3,700 miles each way. And I didn't do the calculation for kilometers because miles is just mainly in the United States. I think for kilometers, 2.2, that's going to be, that's going to be, this isn't a math podcast. I'm going to say that it's closer to maybe uh, 7,600, maybe 7,700 kilometers, which is a, uh, a ridiculous number. So they are, you know, almost always on the move there. Uh, sea turtles mate at sea, but then they come ashore on beaches to lay their eggs. This is a fairly well-known fact. Um, if you've ever seen documentaries of it, or there's been clips on YouTube, I actually watched one recently. It's it's part of the reason why I'm doing sea turtles right now because I was watching and I was like, this is, this is amazing. Um, so in a, in a single nesting season, females lay between two and six clutches of eggs, each containing 65 to 180 eggs. And so these are called clutches or like the batches of eggs. Uh, and they're laid approximately every two weeks. And the period between female nesting seasons really range from one to nine years. And just let me take a, a quick uh, sip of my tea here for any of you out there, maybe at work or, or whatnot, you know, you can uh, take a sip of whatever whatever you got there. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's water, maybe it's tea, maybe it's coffee. Uh, main thing is to stay hydrated, like sea turtles in this case. Anyways, um, so they lay, uh, they come ashore on beaches to lay their eggs, unlike many other marine uh, marine animals. Uh, two to six clutches of eggs, 65 to 180 eggs. So females dig a hole in the sand and then deposit their clutches uh, or their clutch of eggs, and then they cover it back up and then go right back to the sea. So... This, they make this sort of march, the the uh, the, the baby uh, turtles. After about 60 days, they hatch, and the tiny little hatchlings have to make their way from the nest to the water at night. Um, so this is crucial to their survival, and they have to do it this way. So, you know, having these little turtles going from the... Uh, from the beach all the way back to the water being super small, it's not exactly the safest journey because you have seabirds, you have crabs, you have um, a lot of predators that uh, that are just kind of waiting for for turtles, and that's you know it contributes a lot to to the to the food chain, uh, and you know and having nature always has this sort of balance, and in this case. Um, as the sun comes up and you get that natural light from the horizon, it's what guides the hatchlings to the ocean. So it's game on, green light, and they got to go to the water. But you have, you know, as we said before, we have crabs, we have seabirds, we have things that, uh, that really prey on the, on the young turtles. And I forgot what the number was. I was watching a documentary. I think it was one in a one in hundred or one in, you know, a very large number actually make it to adulthood. And this is why it is extremely important that these animals, um, you know, lay 65 to 180 eggs. You need a big uh, population size in the beginning prior to, prior to this process where they have to, you know, uh, make this sort of trial of, of survival to go into the, into the water. I just think that it's incredibly, um, you know, interesting but also in nature's you know we we all know that nature can can be can be cruel and in this way having basically their first bit of life being they have to go past you know uh, all these different predators to make it out to live um, so they have to do this trial right out of the gate but uh, you know you know w with humans it's a different story because in animals or um, the majority of other animals uh, they take uh, not as much time to, to really uh, be able to be independent in this way. And for sea turtles, it seems to be right away. But just like horses, for example, in a few hours, they're able to walk and run around. Humans can't exactly do that. But, uh, but so I just think it's a really interesting fact that uh, these tiny hatchlings have to make this, this long journey from their nests into the water, this huge uh, trial right at the beginning. Um, so when you see a... An, an adult sea turtle, you know that they have 
they really were uh, best suited to, to be there. Uh, whether it be luck, whether it be maybe they were faster than the others, you know, that, that's just how nature has its way of, of operating. Um, but a threat, not just the predators, but we talked about just now that how they actually uh, make it out to the, or, or rather have the green light to go uh, to the water is from the natural light at the horizon. So lights from hotels, lights from homes, any kind of other uh, coastal sort of buildings there, uh, it can really confuse the turtles into heading the wrong way. So that is bad news because then, you know, out of those two, and, two to six clutches of eggs, you can have none of them going to the water because they don't know where to go. So, you know, this is this kind of secondhand interference. It's not like, you know, somebody is directly coming and, and, uh, and you know, uh, or taking their habitat away. It's more in this way that they... Uh, you know, humans were building buildings and in turn covering co- uh, or, or, you know, covering their path. So inadvertently really messing with their biological, um, with their biological or, or their instinctual uh, needs there right at birth. So it's, it's, it is a real big problem. It is incredibly difficult to solve, though, because, you know, it's, it's hard to make that argument of, okay, this building has to go because these these turtles don't know where to go, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the kind of uh, world that we operate in. Um, so coastal development is not the best for these guys. You know, in certain parts of the water, it would be better not to have these huge buildings covering uh, these, uh, their journey, right? Unlike other turtles, sea turtles can't put their head and limbs inside their shells, which is a lot of what turtles are known for. I didn't know that personally. Um, I thought that all, all turtles kind of did that as a defense mechanism, but I guess in the case of sea turtles, it wouldn't really make sense. I think a better to, uh, uh, protective mechanism would just be to swim away. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how they protect themselves from predators in the in the water. Nothing really came up, and I'm realizing now that uh, maybe I should have uh, searched that up. But uh, but they can't put their head and their limbs inside. So that kind of classic turtle move, sea turtles can't do that. Uh, Warmer temperatures result in more female sea turtles being born, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I don't know if this is true among any other animals. I'm sure that it is. Uh, You know, I doubt that it's just one species that 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 has this sort of this sort of uh, tendency uh, or or biological uh, kind of predisposition. Um, But you know, that that's something that you wouldn't really think about, that temperature results in different sort of species, uh, not species, different uh, sex of the, of the animals. But in this case, female sea turtles are born um, more often in warmer temperatures than male sea turtles. Uh, leatherback turtles were around, so the leatherback is getting a lot of, a lot of uh, hype on this episode here. It's, they seem to be a very popular one. They were around when the T-Rex was alive. So in fact, sea turtles roamed the Earth, uh, the Earth's oceans for the last 110 million years. And I believe the number for when dinosaurs were extinct was 65 million. I hope that's not wrong. 65. Six. I was such a huge dinosaur buff when I was a kid. And then as I grew older, I've been sort of, <laughs> I've been sort of uh, going away from it a little bit or I, or I kind of disconnected from it for a while. But now I'm really starting to enjoy some books of, uh, of, of dinosaur uh, stuff recently. If you guys liked dinosaurs as kids, we, you know, from, uh, let's say from the 90s, right? So if you, if you grew up now in the 2000s um, and you're not really into dinosaurs too much anymore, since the late 90s, dinosaurs have had such a spike in popularity and in actual paleontology, like paleontologists, we have so many more of them uh, than we had before. Dinosaur discoveries up the wazoo. So if you, uh, you know, kind of really like dinosaurs and kind of forgot about it and maybe would like to learn more about them or get back into it, uh, dy- you know, there's um, so many more dinosaurs than when, than when we were kids. So it's incredibly interesting to me. But anyways, leatherback turtles, when the T-Rex was alive, that is super cool. So we're, we're talking, we're, these guys are, are dinosaurs, basically, to me. Um, sea turtles eat a large number of jellyfish. Jellyfish was actually, I already started uh, working on another episode for jellyfish. Um, oh, I shouldn't have done that spoiler. Anyways, because jellyfish are super cool, uh, but they eat a large number of jellyfish. Um, sea turtles can live a long time. Some, some can live 
uh, up to 50 years or more. So huge lifespans, uh, kind of similar to that of humans. So we've, we've seen really old turtles before, um, and it's really interesting how they uh, can live that long. Maybe they have sort of slower metabolisms, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but marine turtles, so although they can live a really long time, because of this, they take decades to mature. We're talking 20 to 30 years. So not, not like humans. Humans you know, mature le in less time than that. But um, marine turtles take much longer, in that case, to be able to reproduce and to, and to do what they do best. Um, and marine turtles, they, can, they also consume, we talked about jellyfish, they consume squid, they t uh, barnacles, sponges, and sea. Here we go, here's the word, sea anemones. Anemones, I said that right, I, I believe the first time and the second time. That's a tough word. Uh, so they consume a lot, of, a lot of different stuff. The majority of turtles that are not in the water, as you guys know, are herbivores. Um, so, but in the case of marine turtles, we got squid, sponges, barnacles, and anemones. Uh, most sea turtles spend their lives alone until they mate, so we see another kind of solitary species, although you will sometimes see them rest and feed uh, with, other, uh, with other sea turtles, uh, not just themselves. I'm just going to take another quick uh, swig of my tea. We're going to just do some rapid fire facts here. Uh, you know, we're getting close to the end of the episode. We're going to do some rapid fire ones. So we got sea turtles can stay underwater for up to five hours. So, you know, I think this is the number one contender for how long so far. In the episode, we've covered 14 animals. Some of them were 20 minutes to 30 minutes, so a long time. But now we're talking five hours. So I think sea turtle takes the, takes the gold medal on that one. And the leatherback sea turtle, again, getting the spotlight, has been recorded swimming as fast as 22 miles per hour, for those of you guys that are in the U.S. And then for, for, for my Canadian fans, 35 kilometers an hour which is incredibly quickly. If you're talking about, this is a leatherback sea turtle, you know, 2,000 pounds, uh, over six feet long. That is very fast, 35 kilometers an hour. Uh, loggerhead sea turtles drink salt water and excrete excess salt through glands that they have in their eyes. I've heard of this before. I want to say it is called the supraorbital gland. I believe that's what it's called. I'm not entirely sure. That's just off the top of my head because I believe that penguins share this same sort of mechanism uh, because it's really important that there's no excess salt because that causes all kinds of problems with, with osmosis in the, in, the, in the organs and whatnot. And that would be really bad for everything, for kidneys, for whatever. So uh, they have a special gland that they, that they uh, are able to excrete excess salt from. Young flatback sea turtles sleep on the surface of the water. So if you ever see kind of this, this thing, uh, this sort of rocky, rocky thing uh, protruding out of the ground or not of the ground of the water, uh, that may as well be a young flatback sea turtle. So just be careful around that. Uh, don't jump on it. Uh, sea turtles are toothless but have powerful jaws that are able to crush, bite, and, and tear food. Um, so they don't have teeth. I, I believe the vast majority of, of the animals that we've covered do have teeth. These guys are toothless, but they do have uh, quite powerful jaws. If you've ever seen snapping turtles before, they have quite a powerful jaw, uh, one that is, is incredibly scary. Uh, so we, a snapping turtle will cover on another, <laughs> on another episode, and we'll try to make it seem less scary. But uh, sea turtles, toothless, okay? Um, all sea turtles are threatened or endangered. So this is not good, obviously, but this is also, I believe, common knowledge, which is good. They face an uncertain future due to many threats. Um, so like we talked about before, we have coastal habitation from human beings. We have uh, plastic pollution. We have, uh, you know, uh, basically things like that. Uh, we have some habitat loss in, in, in terms of not so much habitat loss, but of things that they eat that uh, are, are getting endangered as well, which causes problems for them. Uh, but the main thing I would say, I would love to make a segment on the show uh, where we kind of talk about what, what, what we can do to help out, uh, you know, in some way or another. And in the case of sea turtles, I think it's mostly, I think the best thing that people can do is really just watch their, uh, you know, watch for littering, do your best not to litter, right? It's, it's, it, it becomes such a, such a, a problem. Uh, and especially with plastics, right? Because plastics, as we know, 
do not exactly dissolve right away in, in water. It, it creates many problems with microplastics and water uh, that are there seemingly forever. So, you know, do your best. Try to try to recycle, try to be, you know, dispose of waste the proper way because we've learned so much about sea turtles here and they are awesome. I want them around for another uh, 100 million years. Um, and let's talk about the last fact, which is the name, okay? For any of you new people out there, we always love to do a name or uh, some fact about the name. Maybe there's a story. There was a lot of stuff to do with the turtle, stuff that I didn't know would be relevant. But um, basically, uh, English-speaking sailors gave the word turtle to us, according to Merriam-Webster's uh, d- uh, dictionary. There was some other stuff talking about uh, how it had some religious uh, affiliations in some way, but it didn't seem really that relevant. If you guys want to learn more about it, I forgot. What, uh, oh yeah, if you go on the Merriam-Webster's dictionary, they have this whole kind of story about it. But it was uh, it was it was too long and really not relevant in this case. So, anyways. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed. I got really fired up this episode for for sea turtles. Um, thank you very much for tuning in to the podcast. Uh, you guys can follow the podcast. What helps the most at this point in time, because as you know, we're ad free and everything like that at this point. Uh, you can always share the podcast, share with somebody else that wants to relax with some animal facts and learn a little something at the same time. It really helps the show out. And for if you guys want to keep listening. Uh, you know, uh, helping the show grow is a great way to, to contribute. So thank you so very much, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.